stage is set uh, for the seventh and final phase of Lok Sabha polls to be held tomorrow. 59 constituencies across seven states and Union Territory of Chandigarh will vote in the seventh phase on 19th of May. Over 1,12,000 polling stations uh, are in place for the smooth conduct of the polls. Over 10 crore voters will see the fate uh, of uh, 918 candidates in this phase. The polling will take place uh, at uh, 13 seats each in UP and Punjab, 9 seats in West Bengal, 8 seats each in Bihar and Madhya Pradesh. Also voting in this phase uh, are the states of Himachal Pradesh where voting will take place in all the four Lok Sabha seats, 3 seats in Jharkhand and 1 seat in Chandigarh. Talking about the key candidates in this phase, uh, they are Prime Minister Narendra Modi who is seeking re-election from Varanasi seat. Several union ministers are also in the fray, including Manoj Sinha from Ghazipur, Anupriya Patel from Mirzapur, Ravi Shankar Prasad from Patna Sahib, Ram Kripal Yadav from Patliputra, R.K. Singh from Ara, Hardeep Singh Puri from Amritsar, Harsimrat Kaur Badal from Bhatinda, and Ashwini Kumar Chaube from Baksar. And other prominent faces in this phase are Shatrugan Sinha from Patna Sahib contesting on a Congress ticket. Former Union Minister Upendra Kushwaha, former Lok Sabha Speaker Meera Kumar, Lalu Prasad Yadav's daughter Misa Bharti and actor Sunny Deol. In the wake of incidents of poll violence in West Bengal, the Election Commission has ordered heavy deployment of the central forces in the state to ensure free and fair polls. Now, a total of uh, 710 companies of the central forces are being deployed by the Election Commission to ensure free and fair polls in West Bengal. Earlier, Election Commission had curtailed campaigning in the state for the seventh phase by almost a day. Campaigning in West Bengal ended at 10 p.m. on 16th of May, while for all the other states, it ended at 5 p.m. on 17th of May. All right, our colleagues are joining us from the ground. They're getting us all the election-related updates. We have with us Navikram Singh joining us from Indore in Madhya Pradesh. Also, Kriti Mishra is joining us from Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh. Anu Devan is joining us from Kolkata. And Akhilesh Suman is also joining us from Bihar's Patna Sahib. Let's first go to... Uh, Navikram, who is joining us uh, from Indore. Uh, in, uh, Navikram, we have been talking about the fact that how of the eight constituencies that are going to polls in the seventh phase in Madhya Pradesh, of course, all eyes are going to be Indore, which is a traditionally BJP uh, seat. Uh, but this time, Sumitra Mahajan is not contesting. But uh, speaking about the other seats uh, in this particular phase, uh, uh, all eyes, of course, are also going to be on the Ratlam and the Mansour seats. बिल्कुल ऐश्वर्या इंदौर के अलावा अगर बाकी सीटों पर भी यहां पर बात करें तो ये पूरा इलाका अगर जो निमाड़ और मालवा रीजन में आता है और निमाड़ और मालवा में खास तौर पर कई सीटों पर बीजेपी बहुत लंबे अरसे से काबिज रही है पिछली बार अगर हम उपचुनाव में देखें बीजेपी ने जरूर यहाँ पर सीट खोई थी लेकिन इन पूरी आठों सीटों पर 2014 में बीजेपी का कब्जा था इससे पहले कि अगर चुनावी इतिहास पर गौर करें तो जनसंघ के जमाने से यहाँ पर बीजेपी ने अपनी दमदार मौजूदगी दर्ज की है ऐसे में हाल ही में हुए विधानसभा चुनाव में कांग्रेस ने यहाँ बेहतर प्रदर्शन किया था इससे पहले रतलाम में उपचुनाव में कांग्रेस ने जीत दर्ज की थी लोकसभा में तो ऐसे में कांग्रेस की कोशिश है कि अपने जो जनाधार को है वो बढ़ाया जा सके वहीं बीजेपी ने एक विशेष रणनीति तैयार की है जिसके तहत यहाँ के जो जो नाराज नेता हैं जिस तरीके से पहले खबरें आई थी कि यहाँ जो पूर्व मंत्री मध्य प्रदेश सरकार में थी अर्चना चिटनेस और पूर्व प्रदेश अध्यक्ष जो खंडवा से चुनाव लड़ रहे हैं नंद कुमार उन दोनों के बीच में आपस में गुटबाजी है मनमुटाव है ऐसे कई इलाकों में उन्होंने जो भारतीय जनता पार्टी का आला कमान है और प्रदेश नेतृत्व तो है वो उसने लगातार कोशिश की है कि इस गुटबाजी को खत्म किया जाए और ये इसका असर भी देखने को मिला दोनों ने एक मंच पर आकर रैली संबोधित की और कार्यकर्ताओं को संबोधित किया साथ ही पूर्व मुख्यमंत्री शिवराज सिंह चौहान लगातार पिछले दिनों से यहाँ के इस पूरे इलाके के दौरे पर आ रहे हैं तो कोशिश है कि बीजेपी का जो घटा हुआ वोट बैंक जिस वोट बैंक में चेंद लगाई थी कांग्रेस ने उस वोट बैंक को एक बार फिर पाया जा सके वहीं कांग्रेस यहाँ पर अपनी जमीन को बनाने की कोशिश में है कांग्रेस की कोशिश है 
कि क्योंकि प्रदेश में उनकी सरकार है ऐसे में प्रदेश के मंत्रियों को जिम्मेदारी दी गई है कि यहाँ ज्यादा से ज्यादा जनाधार को बढ़ाया जा सके तो देखना दिलचस्प होगा कि राज्य सरकार के नेतृत्व वाली कांग्रेस पर भरोसा जताती है यहाँ की जनता या फिर परंपरागत रूप से बीजेपी को ही वोट देती है Akhilesh Suman, who is joining us from Patna, Sahib in Bihar. Uh, Akhilesh, we have been discussing about uh, in length uh, the uh, you know the contest that is on in uh, Patna, Sahib, which is one of the eight constituencies that is going to polls tomorrow. Uh, and we have been speaking about the fact how this uh, is a uh, the most uh, keenly watched contest in the entire seventh phase. Ravi Shankar Prasad, who is contesting election for the first time, is. Uh, contesting against uh, sitting uh, Shatrughan Sinha of the Congress party now but le let's now speak about the rest of the eight uh, Lok Sabha constituencies that are going to polls in this phase tell us more about them right uh, it's a very interesting contest i can tell you that uh, these eight constituencies in bihar in this phase are very prominent you can see it that uh, cabinet ministers phase is there because four sitting cabinet ministers are fighting in this phase right from Ravi Shankar Prasad to Rajkumar Singh to Aswini Chaube and uh, you know that uh, uh, fifth person is Upendra Kuswaha who was a union cabinet minister in NDA time but before election we switched to Grand Alliance so this phase is really in in interesting uh, if I can say you that Ram Kipal Yadav is one of the four cabinet ministers, sitting cabinet minister, who is fighting election against Misa Bharti, uh, who is, you know, Lalu Prasad Yadav's daughter. And this uh, constituency is interesting because, you know, that in last election, uh, RJD did not get any support from anywhere, but this time they are getting support from CPIML. You know, that CPIML also has, uh, you know, around 80,000 to 1 lakh voters in the last election. So RJD is uh, fighting very tough against Ram Kipal Yadav. But given the fact that in last election JDU was not with BJP, but this time JDU is with BJP, so they also have a qualitative addition in their own coffers. So uh, this seat is very prestigious for both NDA and also Lalu Prasad Yadav's clan future and also the Grand Alliance future. Other than that, I can say you the Rajkumar Singh, who is the who was the Union Home Minister, who hails from here, and also he is the Union Minister, you know, Renewable Energy. And people say that he has done tremendous works. Uh, uh, but given the fact that the type of polarization has taken place in our constituency, the same CPIML is getting support from RJD here. So in Patna, CPIML is supporting, you know, RJD. And in ARA, CPIML is getting support from RJD. All so right. it is very, you know, unique combination that once upon a time, uh, all the CPIML, six, uh, you know, uh, assembly candidates of uh, CPIML, which was IPF at that point mm. of time, who had switched to RJD, mm. and uh, that was, you know, for IPF it was a grand zero. All and right. now the same RJD and CPIML has, uh, mm. you know, aligned together to get mm. the maximum number of voters. So the two constituencies are very, very interesting in this time. All Other right. than that, if you go to Aswini Chaube, who is fighting from Buxar, mm. you know, Aswini Chaube also is known to be, you know, a very, you know, famous candidate here, yes. but he is also getting very, very strong, uh, mm. you know, uh, contest from Grand Alliance. Mm. Other than that, if you go to Sasara, Mira Kumar, who was the uh, former, you know, speaker of Lok Sabha, she right. is also fighting very well. And uh, uh, B BJP NDA Alliance is also giving very good contest to them. So the, the main issues that are cropping up in Bihar, you know, that Bihar has uh, got uh, enough infrastructure as far as roads, electricity is concerned, law and order is also very good. Hmm. But now people have gone into uh, greater discourses. They are asking for uh, employment opportunity because you know that lots of uh, people, Indeed. young so people that from is, Bihar of course, migrate oh, in, from... Uh, employment, of course, is going to be a big issue in Bihar. Uh, but what is happening in Uttar Pradesh, uh, we'll uh, go across uh, to Kriti Mishra who is joining us from Vardasi. Kriti, as far as uh, the final phase of uh, Lok Sabha elections are concerned, this is uh, said that uh, UPs, uh, this phase is, of course, one of the most uh, uh, interesting and uh, most important as well uh, because uh, not only the, because of the fact that the number of uh, key uh, political bigwigs, of course, PM Modi is uh, there, Mahindra Singh Pandey is there, Manoj Sinha is there, Anupriya Patel is there, but at the same time, the very fact that uh, these seats, 13 seats were won by the BJP uh, last time, but uh, the, we saw what happened in Gorakhpur uh, as well. Uh, so uh, give us a sense of the entire 13 seats that are going to polls in the last phase. 
Absolutely, Ashwarya. Now, UP will vote for the penultimate phase of the 2019 Lok Sabha elections. Of course, people have been terming Varanasi as a battle royale, but many political pundits here say that it's not really a battle for Prime Minister Modi, who's seeking second term from Varanasi. And many say it's going to be cakewalk uh, for him, or it's a foregone conclusion that he will win this Varanasi seat. But uh, the BJP has left no stone unturned to ensure that the victory margin increases. And of course, uh, the SP, BSP and RLD combined and also the Congress, they have also tried to put in all efforts to give tough fight to Prime Minister Modi. Talking about uh, the other seats, of course, Gorakhpur, which is considered the fiefdom of Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath in 2018 by polls. Gorakhpur did give a setback uh, to the BJP, wherein it lost uh, the by poll and Praveen Nishad of the Nishad party one. But since then, a lot of dynamics have changed because uh, Nishad party has joined hands uh, with the BJP and in fact, Praveen Nishad is contesting from Sant Kabir Nagar. There are several other important seats, for instance, Ghazipur and also Mirzapur, uh, from where union ministers uh, Manoj Sinha and also Nupriya Patel are in fray. But remember, these seats also, they are, uh, the combined of uh, SP and BSP, they are hoping to give oppose a very tough challenge because they are banking on the caste arithmetic the BJP is focusing on the developmental works taken up in these constituencies. Another important constituency is, of course, going to be Chandoli, uh, from where BJP state president Mahindra Nath Pandey is in fray. There also the SP-BSP combined that is focusing on the caste arithmetic, while the Congress party is also trying to resurrect itself in eastern Uttar Pradesh, and particularly the onus lies on the shoulders of Congress General Secretary for eastern Uttar Pradesh, Priyanka Gandhi, yes. who has campaigned extensively in this region. We've seen her road shows uh, in Varnasi, in Mirzapur, and also Kushinagar. Kushinagar particularly is extremely important for the Congress party, from where former MOS home RPN Singh is contesting. So several high-profile seats, and now the people of Uttar Pradesh will seal the fate of the candidates, around 167 candidates in this last phase, and the most crucial one, of course. Over to you, Ashwarya. Right, indeed. Apart from, from Uttar Pradesh, all eyes are also going to be what happens in West Bengal. Let's go across to Anu Divan. Anu, speaking about West Bengal, uh, of course, uh, we have seen how violence uh, has dominated uh, the entire, uh, all the phases of uh, the elections uh, so far. But uh, this time, the Election Commission has said that foolproof measures are in place. More than 700 companies of the paramilitary forces are going to be deployed in all the polling booths. Give us a sense of what is happening in West Bengal at the moment. Definitely, as well as seeing the first six phases, we have seen the incident of violence being increasing day by day and poll by poll, uh, sorry, faces by faces in West Bengal. But after that, it is taking a strict action on the increasing number of violence incident in West Bengal. Election Commission decided to cut short the campaigning, but after that also the cam uh, incident of violence didn't decrease, but it increased. We have seen in the uh, yesterday only, uh, uh, a day before yesterday night, uh, cars of BJP leaders were attacked by some goons. They have reported to the Election Commission asked an inquiry from them and asked and even asked for the flag march of the central paramilitary forces but now election commission has uh, prepared everything is being prepared on the ground for conducting the polls which is going to help tomorrow that is the seventh phase on 19th of may as uh, election commission has deployed around 710 uh, paramilitary forces 710 companies of central forces and with uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, measures taken to Keep, uh, keep eyes on the very critical polling booth with uh, flying squad, quick responses team, CCTV cameras and other, uh, other uh, measures needed to take care of the safety and security and each and every voter who comes to vote. An election commission is trying hard so that there is no fear among the people. No people come out and vote in large numbers because this seventh phase is really crucial and very important being the last phase. Election commission wants to assure people that uh, violence can be stopped if a measures can be taken. Although election commission has been trying hard to uh, to see that the no violence happens in the city but, uh, uh, but there were some of the other Things which uh, uh, which have raised question on the preparations done by election commission. Although Mamta Banerjee, uh, we have seen on the ground Mamta Banerjee alleging central paramilitary forces that they have interfered in the work of the state government. But since the, it's a Lok Sabha election, it, uh, none of the uh, 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 election commission cannot uh, deny all these things, but have to take care of each and every polling station and polling booth. And along with that, Ashwarya, uh, on 12th of May, where the violence happened in the, in the Bankura parliamentary constituency, one polling booth.
will be also going for re-polling on 19th of May. Hmm. So seeing the situation there also, Election Commission is taking strict actions, is preparing hard so that none of the violence incidents happen and the seven phase goes free and fair according to it. Election Commission is keeping eye on each and every political activity, each and every activity of right. uh, uh, of every citizen of uh, West Bengal, every uh, voter also so that because it's difficult to judge on ground that who can be a uh, uh, who can be the culprit Indeed. of the world. That's a huge challenge so for, so for the Election Commission of India but uh, it uh, has uh, ensured uh, the safety all uh, the polling booths in uh, West Bengal will have a uh, central parliament military forces. Uh, let's get an update on Punjab now. Our colleague Ravinder Singh Shoran is joining us uh, from uh, Anandpur Sahib. Uh, speaking about uh, the 13 seats uh, in Punjab that are going to polls in the seventh phase, uh, Ravindra, give us an update, uh, give it a sense of uh, how significant these seats are and uh, considering the fact that both the uh, sides are claiming that they have an upper edge uh, of course, Amrinder Singh returned as the Chief Minister of Punjab in 2017 after decade the rule of uh, Shiromani Akali Dal and BJP. And uh, that is how it is uh, looking uh, uh, confident. But BJP and SAD are also very uh, confident of their victory. Give us more updates. Good morning, Ashwarya. You are right. The decade-long old rule of the Shiromani Akali Dal and the BJP combined that is still one of the core issues of this election. The Congress party is again and again bringing the issues at the time when the Shiromani Akali Dal was here in the government. And some of the decisions taken by the Akali Dal government, BJP is bringing, the Congress party is bringing them to the core of the agenda of this election. In, uh, during the rule of the Shiromani Akali Dal, one was the sacrilege uh, the uh, sacrilege happened with the Guru Granth Sahib and that was the core issue the Congress party is trying to bring and making it at the center of the whole election agenda. On the other hand, Shiromani Kaledal and the BJP combined, they are bringing the issue of 1984 Sikh Sikhroid. Remember Ashwarya, Punjab, the politics of Punjab has a big role. Religion has a big role to play in the politics of Punjab. And both the political parties are trying to play with the emotions of the people on the, on, uh, on the lines of uh, religion. Hmm. Also, the main, uh, other important issues in Punjab are the cotton belt. See, the, the Bhatinda, Muksar, Malot, Malwa, this is Malwa belt. This has been known as the cotton belt of uh, this country. All but right. now, for the last at least uh, three decades, the farmers are in complete distress hmm. and uh, they are uh, f f uh, facing a lot of problems. The Congress party at the time when they contest the elections of the assembly, they have uh, promised that uh, they will bring some good solutions for the uh, welfare of the farmers. But still, after two years of the rule, mm -hmm. the farmers are still in the deep distress. And we are hearing the news of farmer suicide very often. Yes. Sukhbir Singh Badal, the president of uh, Shiromani Akali Dal, he is contesting from the Firozpur seat. And he is uh, fielded uh, against Sher Singh Gubhaya, who is a renegade from the Shiromani Akali Dal and now contesting on the ticket of uh, the Congress party. This, uh, the neighboring seat of uh, Shiromani, uh, the Sukh Firozpur is Bhatinda, where Sukhbir's wife, the Union Minister Harsimrat Kaur Badal, is contesting. So, and uh, the more other important seats in Punjab are Anandpur Sahib, where, where we are standing right now, where Prabhu Singh Sindhu Majra, the sitting member of parliament, is contest against the former Union Minister Manish Tiwari. Hmm. Sunny Indeed, Deol is so contesting. That is, uh, these are the very significant seats uh, uh, where uh, uh, all eyes uh, will be as far as uh, the 13 seats of Punjab are concerned. I'd like to thank uh, all our reporters who joined us from the ground. Uh, thank you so much, Ravindra, who joined us uh, from Punjab. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Anu Devan, who joined us from Kolkata, and uh, also Akhilesh, uh, who joined us from Bihar. Thank you, all of you, for joining us. And let's get you some more election-related news. Uh, Bypools for four uh, Vidhan Sabha seats of uh, Tamil Nadu will also be held tomorrow. 63 candidates are in the fray for the assembly seats of uh, Sulur, Ota, Pidaram and uh, Thirupadakun. Bypools uh, to 18 uh, seats will be held on 18th of April along with 38 Lok Sabha segments in the state. Heavy deployment of around uh, 16,000 personnel has been ordered.